ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله ربي وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الجليل بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم ان زلزله الساعه شيء عظيم ويقول الله تبارك وتعالى القارعه والقارعه ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى اذا زلزلت الارض زلزالها واخرجت الارض اثقالها وقال الانسان ما لها وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامه حتى يسال عن اربع عن عمره فيما افما افناه وعن شبابه فيما ابلاه وعن ماله من اين اكتسبه وفيما انفقه وعن علمه ماذا عمل به او كما قال صلوات الله وسلامه عليه فالحمد لله we thank allah and we praise allah allah is that being that no matter how much you praise him you have not given the right of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no matter how much your heart is overwhelmed with the greatness of allah and it shivers from the fear of allah you have not realized the power of allah as the power of allah should be realized as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ma qadaru allah haqqa qadrih that they have not realized the power of allah as is as it actually is wal ardu jami'an qabadatuhu yawm al qiyamah that the entire earth will be in the grasp of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment was samawatu matwiyatun bi yamini and that the heavens they will be rolled in the hand of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun Oh praise be to Allah Azza wa Jal above all that they ascribe to Allah. Allah is that being who in such a simple manner will fold the heavens and end the existence of this world. Yawma natwi as-samaa'a ka tayyi as-sijl lil-kutub that on that day Allah will fold the heavens in the same way pages are closed or folded for a book. Allah will fold the heavens as books are closed. As paper is folded Allah will fold the heavens. As Allah says, "Farji'i al-basara hal tara min futur?" Look, do you see any cracks? Do you see any deficiencies in this heaven? Allah says in another ayah, "A antum ashaddu khalqan am as-samaa'." Are you a greater creation of Allah or the heavens are a greater creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Huh? فَرْجِعْ ثُمَّ رُجِعِ الْبَصَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ يَنْقَلِبْ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ خَاسِئًا وَهُوَ حَسِيرٌ Then try to look again at this creation of Allah. These heavens that Allah has created and your eyes become overwhelmed and they return, they return to you dejected and defeated. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَإِلَاهٌ مَعَ اللَّهِ is there any ilah? Is there any God with Allah Azza wa Jal? Is there any sharik? Is there any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal explains himself and explains his power and his greatness and says, Ya ayyuhan nasu duriba matanun fastami'u lah. O mankind, O people, we're going to put forth for you an example. So listen up. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَنْ يَخْلُقُوا ذُبَابًا وَلَوْ اجْتَمَعُوا لَهِ All that you call on besides Allah. All that you hope from besides Allah. All that you ask besides Allah. The Prophet ﷺ, he was riding with Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu on a donkey. Young boy, eight, ten years old, something like that. And he tells him, 
يا غلام او oh بوي احفظ الله يحفظك protect the orders of Allah Allah will protect you احفظ الله تجده تجاهك protect the orders of Allah you will find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right there for you this is المعاملة this is how to come to know Allah you can never know Allah with his disobedience the only way a person can know Allah is with the obedience of Allah and with the worship of Allah. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ أَيْ يَعْرِفُونَ That Allah has not created the human being and the jinn except for the worship of Allah. In other words, to know Allah. In other words, you cannot come to know Allah except through the worship of Allah, except through the obedience of Allah. اِحْفَضِ اللَّهَ تَجِدْهُ تُجَاهَكْ Protect the orders of Allah, you will find Allah right there for you. فَإِذَا سَأَلْتْ فَإِذَا سَأَلْتْ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ If you must ask, ask Allah. Don't ask other than Allah. Ask Allah for your needs. Ask Allah for your food. Ask Allah for your water. Sahaba used to make two rak'ah to ask Allah for salt. For your most basic needs, understand that it is only Allah who is feeding you. It is only Allah who is clothing you. Understand your state of ubudiyah, your in most your utter need of Allah. Don't feel that you don't need Allah because Allah is sending you your risk automatically without asking. Ask Allah. Huh? Inna ladina tadruna min dunillah. All that you call on besides Allah. Layyakhluqudubaba. They are incapable of creating a fly. They are incapable of creating a fly. Even if they were all together, their collective resources and brain power and manpower and financial power and organizational power to create one fly, they cannot do it. Even if they were to all gather to do so. And if the fly was to take something from them, if the fly was to take a grain of rice from them, they would not be able to retrieve it from that fly. They are weak and the fly is weak. They have no power and the fly has no power. They have not realized the power of Allah as the power of Allah should be realized. Verily Allah is almighty, huh? all high. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we know Allah? Do we realize who Allah is? If you want to know, if you know Allah, if you want to know, if you know Allah, then when haram comes to you, how do you react? And when an order of Allah comes to you, how do you react? Then you will know if you know Allah. Is it intrinsic? Is it built inside of you? That Allah has made this haram for me. I will not come to it. Is it intrinsic? Is it inside of you? That Allah has ordered this for me. So I will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk is easy. Huh? Talk is easy. Claims of love. Easy. Real love, hard. To actually love Allah is something different than to claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'asil ilaha wa anta tudhira hubbahu wa inna hadha fil af'ali badi'un inna ka in kunta fi hubbika sadiqan la ata'tahu inna al muhibba li man yuhibbu muti'u. As the poet says, that you disobey the Creator and you are claiming that you love Him. And verily, from actions, this is a very strange action. This doesn't make any sense. It's incoherent. <laughs> verily, if you were sincere in your love of Allah, you would obey Allah. <laughs> that person, the lover, is obedient to the beloved. And why is it important to emphasize this point? Because we are in a society where the word love is thrown very freely and very easily. But its weight, oftentimes is, its, its, its weight is not there. Its value is not there. Its intensity is not there. Its repercussions are not there. It's only lip service. It's only a word uttered with no reality behind it.
But we understand that on that day when we will stand in front of Allah and we will be asked these four questions. Three questions we will be asked regarding our Iman in the Qabr, in our graves. Man Rabbuk, who is your Rabb? Ma Deenuk, what is your Deen? Wa man ar-rajuli alladhi bu'itha fikum, and who is the man who was sent to you? These three questions from your heart you will have to answer them. And then on the Day of Judgment, your life will answer these four questions. Your life will answer these four questions. An umrihi fi ma How did you live your life? It will speak for itself. It's nothing to, you can't invent an answer, it's something that occurred in the past. It will be there in your book recorded. In your right hand or in your left hand or behind your back, depending on how you receive your book of deeds. An umrihi fi fi ma afna. You will give your obituary to Allah. You will give the account of your deeds to Allah. وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِي مَا On your youth, how did you spend your youth? الشَّبَابُ شُعْبَةٌ مِنَ الْجُنُونَ أو كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ That youth is a part of insanity. Because as we know, a person isn't fully sane at that age. So at that point in his life, or her life, where is the deen of Allah? From the seven that will be in the shade of Allah on the day where there will be no shade except His shade. And what is the shade of the day of judgment? The shade of the day of judgment is you will be shaded from a sun that will be one mile from the heads of Allah's creation. Some will be sweating to their ankles, some will be sweating to their waist, and some will be immersed in their own sweat. So from one of these seven categories, Shabun نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ a young man who lived his youth in the obedience and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَاهِ How did you use your youth? That time, that energy, the prime. How was your prime used? Was it used? Was it wasted? Was it in play? Was it in jest? Or was it in preparation for that day where no one will know anyone? And there will be no close friends, and there will be no relatives, and there will be no helpers. It will be only you and Allah and your deeds. وَعَنْ شَبَابِهِ فِيمَا أَبْلَهِ وَعَنْ مَالِهِ كُلَّهَا لِلْبَلَاءِ أَخْوَانِي It is all a test of Allah. All that you are given, by, for, given uh, from Allah is only so that Allah can test you. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا The one who created death and life to test which of you has the best deeds. All of this, your youth, your wealth, your life, your children, your family, everything, only Allah is only testing you. Allah is only testing you. It's not an objective within itself, it's not a goal within itself, it's not a gift within itself, it's a gift with strings attached. With strings attached, Allah is testing you, what will you do with this? Allah has given you wealth, will you spend it? Allah has given you poverty, will you be patient? It all has a string attached to it. Huh? Your wealth, where did you earn it? Was it in selling what Allah made haram? Was it in interacting with interest? Huh? Did you buy your house on interest? Did you buy your car on interest? You'll be asked. Everything will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min aina ktasaba? How did you earn your money? Did you tell, sell somebody something faulty and not tell them the faults of that piece of merchandise? You will be asked about it on the day of judgment. Wa ammalihi min aina ktasaba? On your wealth, where did you earn it? And how did you spend your money? That money that Allah gave you, did you hold it all and you didn't give it its right? Did you spend it all in a wasteful manner? Or did you spend in that which pleased Allah and avoided waste in that which angered Allah? And you maintained a middle path in your wealth. A middle path between spending and holding. Between helping others and avoiding wasting that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you. Huh? Huh? And on your knowledge, 
Allah will ask each and every one of us about our knowledge. What do we know? And what do we do? Knowing is one thing. And doing is something else. And it is from the justice of Allah. <coughs> because Allah doesn't burden any, anybody anything huh, that they cannot bear. So that person who was غير مكلف, somebody who was mentally incapable, huh, or mentally deficient, that they cannot take care of themselves. That person, there is no hisab for them in the first place. They are incapable of holding knowledge, they will not even be asked by Allah Azza wa Jal. Only the forgiveness of Allah for them. In the same way like children, even children of non-Muslims who pass away that they will be in Jannah. There will be no asking for them. There will be no difficulty for them. Huh? Why? Huh? Because they did not know. But every human being grows up with an intrinsic knowledge that Allah is one. There is no excuse for that. With the Tawheed of Allah, even if you never heard of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is there when you were in Alam Al-Arwah, in the realm of souls, before you were brought to this world and placed in your body and given your mother and your father. Allah asked, Alastu bi Rabbikum, am I not your Rabb? Qalu bala. They said, yes, O oh Allah, you are a Rabb. So it is there, it is intrinsic knowledge. It is something every child is born with, the oneness of Allah. This is known by every person. And we are Muslim, so we know Muhammad Rasulullah. And we know our Fatiha. And maybe we learned Ikhlas also. And we know we are supposed to make Salah. And we know we are supposed to lower our gaze. And we know we are supposed to not lie. And we know, and we know, and we know, and we know, and we know. And we will be asked. We will be asked regarding that which we knew. That the person who didn't know and didn't do will have one regret on the Day of Judgment. And the person who knew and did not do will have seven regrets, regrets on the Day of Judgment. You will have seven regrets on the Day of Judgment. If you knew and you didn't do, where is the excuse? Our deen is a deen of a'mal. Our deen is a deen of action. It's a deen of work. You work for the deen. You will not build your iman except with work. Theoretical talk, okay. But you won't build your iman this way. You will not come close to Allah this way. Unless it is turned into action. Wallahi, unless it is turned into action. Taqwa is built on a'mal. Iman is built on a'mal. It is all related to your a'mal. It all comes from your action. Attending a class, Alhamdulillah, you benefited. Did you implement it? Ah. Not only should we come to the house of Allah when there is a class, but we should come to the house of Allah for salah as well. Because the house of Allah is first for iqamat is salah. Yes, it is for ilm. Yes, it is for many things. So it is there, we have to make our deen a deen of action. And understand that knowledge, knowledge alone is not an asset, but it's a liability. It's not an asset, it's a liability that you will be asked about by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ لِلَّهِ نَحْمَدُهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى وَنَسْتَعِينُ بِهِ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنُصَلِّ وَنُسَلِّمْ على البشير النذير محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله We thank Allah, we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We are in need of Allah We have to realize the extent to which we are in need of Allah We have to realize the gravity uh, and the serious nature of that day when we will have to stand in front of Allah It's important that we be light-natured, we be happy. It's important to be jolly. It's important to, like the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك أخاك بوجه طليق. Do not, O oh, كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم, do not belittle anything of good, even if it's to come to your brother with a smiling face. Doesn't mean that we're hard to be around. 
that we're so serious that people run away from us when they see us. That's not the point. But in those moments when the disobedience of Allah comes in front of us, that's when we need to remember these, the serious, the enormity, the gravity of the Day of Judgment. In those, in those moments where we're alone with ourselves and when we feel happy with the bounties or, or we start to become intoxicated with whatever Allah has given us from this world, at that moment you need to remember the gravity and the enormity of the Day of Judgment when you will have to stand in front of Allah. When you start extending and when you start having long plans for your life in this world and you plan out 5 and 10 and 20 and 30 years and you're, plan and you're, and you're running the film through your head, you know, of all of your hopes and all of your ambitions. At that point, you need to remember the gravity and the enormity of the Day of Judgment. As the Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ هَذِمِ الْلَذَّاتِ That مِنْ That frequently remember the terminator of pleasure, which is death. We should ponder over our death. Remember our death. When you want to think of ambition, try to build your investments in your grave. Build for your needs when you will be on the plane of judgment. Try to invest in the real estate of Jannah. Make that your aim and your goal. When you feel overwhelmed with these things of this world, uh, and you spend hours upon hours without remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Fajr comes and then by the time Dhuhr comes, hardly we did it obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we were so busy with this world. Then at that point we need to remember who was Allah. We need to remember we are returning to Allah. We need to remember we will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافينا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقينا شر ما قضيت فإنك سبحانك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يدل من واليت ولا يعز من عاديت تبارك ربنا وتعاليت نستغفرك اللهم ونتوب إليك اللهم يا واصلا منقطعين أوصلنا إليك اللهم إنا نسألك عملا صالحا تقربنا إليك اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأمات إنك قريب مجيب الدعوات وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون <تصفيق>
من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ربي وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا أما بعد قال الله تبعه وسلم لا تزول قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن أربعة عن عمره فيما أفما أفناه وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن علمه ماذا عمل به أو كما قال صلوات الله وسلامه عليه فالحمد لله we thank Allah and we praise Allah. Allah is that being that no matter how much you praise Him, you have not given the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter how much your heart is overwhelmed,